I'm thrilled to be here with you today to share some valuable insights on how to change your mindset with less effort. Are you someone who struggles with negative thoughts, self-doubt, or a lack of motivation? If so, you are not alone. In today's fast-paced world, it's easy to get caught up in the daily grind and lose sight of our true potential. But the good news is, you have the power to turn things around and create a positive and successful mindset. In this video, I'll be sharing five practical ways that you can implement in your life to change your mindset and reach your goals with less effort. These are the same principles that I've personally used to transform my own life and have helped thousands of others do the same. So, if you're ready to take control of your thoughts and achieve the success you desire, then listen closely to today's message. I guarantee that by the end of this video, you will have the tools and techniques to shift your mindset and create a life of abundance and fulfillment. So, let's get started. Starting with number five, which is to change your mindset with less effort by practicing self-care. Now I know what you may be thinking. How can something as simple as self-care have such a profound impact on our mindset? Well, my friends, I am here to tell you that self-care is not just about pampering ourselves or indulging in luxurious activities. It's about taking care of our mental, emotional, and physical well-being. In this fast-paced world, we often forget to prioritize our own needs. We're constantly bombarded with responsibilities, expectations, and the pressure to succeed. And in the midst of it all, we neglect the most important person in our lives. Ourselves. But let me ask you this. How can we expect to thrive and achieve our goals if we're not taking care of our own well-being? Self-care is not selfish. It's necessary. It's the foundation upon which we can build a positive and resilient mindset. When we practice self-care, we're essentially telling ourselves that we are worthy, important, and deserving of being taken care of. And that, my friends, is a powerful mindset to have. So, how can we incorporate self-care into our daily lives? Well, it can be as simple as taking a few minutes each day to do something that brings us joy. Whether it's reading a book, taking a walk in nature, or indulging in our favorite hobby, self-care can also mean setting boundaries and saying no to things that drain us mentally and emotionally. And let's not forget the importance of taking care of our physical well-being through exercise, proper nutrition, and getting enough rest. Now some of you may be thinking, I don't have time for self-care, I have too many responsibilities. But let me tell you this, my friends. Self-care is not a luxury, it's a necessity. And when we prioritize our well-being, we're actually able to perform better in all areas of our lives. When we take care of ourselves, we have more energy, focus, and resilience to tackle our responsibilities and achieve our goals. Self-care also allows us to cultivate a positive mindset. When we're constantly stressed, exhausted, and overwhelmed, it's easy to fall into a negative mindset. But when we take the time to care for ourselves, we're able to recharge and approach life with a more positive and optimistic outlook. We're also better equipped to handle challenges and setbacks, as we have a strong foundation of self-love and self-worth. I urge you to make self-care a priority in your life. Start small, with just a few minutes each day, and gradually build it into your routine. Remember, self-care is not a one-time thing, it's a continuous practice. And as you incorporate it into your life, you'll start to see the positive impact it has on your mindset and overall well-being. Which leads us to number four, which is to change your mindset with less effort by setting realistic goals. So, let me ask you this. How many of you have set goals for yourself that were so grand and ambitious that you ended up feeling overwhelmed and discouraged? I know I have, and I can tell you from experience that it's not a pleasant feeling. It can make you doubt your abilities and even give up on your dreams. But what if I told you that there's a better way? What if I told you that by setting realistic goals, you can actually increase your chances of success and make the journey towards your dreams more enjoyable? I'm sure you'd be intrigued. So, Let's dive deeper into this concept. First and foremost, setting realistic goals means taking into account your current circumstances, abilities, and resources. It means being honest with yourself about what you can realistically achieve in a given time frame. This doesn't mean you should limit yourself or aim low, but rather, it means setting yourself up for success by setting achievable targets. For example, if your dream is to become a successful entrepreneur, Setting a goal to make a million dollars in your first year of business may not be realistic, but setting a goal to make a profit of $50,000 in your first year is achievable and can still be a stepping stone towards your ultimate goal. Now, some of you may argue that setting realistic goals is not ambitious enough. 
But let me tell you, there's nothing more motivating than seeing yourself make progress towards your goals. When you set realistic goals, you're more likely to achieve them, and that sense of accomplishment will fuel your motivation to keep going and set even bigger goals. Secondly, setting realistic goals allows you to focus on the process rather than the outcome. Many of us are fixated on the end result, and we forget that success is a journey, not a destination. By setting realistic goals, you can break down your bigger dreams into smaller, achievable tasks. This not only makes the journey less daunting, but also allows you to celebrate your progress along the way. As the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day. Similarly, achieving your dreams takes time and effort. But by setting realistic goals, you can make the journey more manageable and less overwhelming. And lastly, setting realistic goals helps you develop a growth mindset. When you set unrealistic goals and fail to achieve them, it's easy to fall into a fixed mindset, where you believe that your abilities and intelligence are fixed traits. But when you set achievable goals, you're more likely to succeed, and that success reinforces the belief that you can continue to grow and improve. This growth mindset is essential for long-term success. It allows you to see setbacks and failures as opportunities to learn and grow, rather than reasons to give up. And that, my friends, is the ultimate mindset shift that can change your life for the better. So, in conclusion, I encourage you to set realistic goals that are achievable, measurable, and time-bound. Focus on the process rather than the outcome, and adopt a growth mindset that allows you to see setbacks as opportunities for growth. By doing so, you'll be well on your way to achieving your goals and creating the life you desire. Which leads us to number three which is to change your mindset with less effort by reframing negative thoughts. Now you may be wondering, what exactly does reframing negative thoughts mean? Well, let me explain. Reframing means to change the way we perceive or think about something. It's about shifting our perspective and looking at things in a more positive light. You see, our thoughts have a powerful impact on our emotions, actions, and ultimately, our results. When we constantly have negative thoughts, we start to believe them, and they become our reality. We become stuck in a cycle of self-doubt, fear, and limiting beliefs. But what if I told you that you have the power to reframe those negative thoughts and turn them into positive ones? Now I'm not saying that it's easy, it takes effort and practice. But the good news is, it takes less effort than you may think, and the results are worth it. So, let me share with you three simple steps to reframe negative thoughts and change your mindset. Step 1. Awareness The first step to reframing negative thoughts is to become aware of them. We often have negative thoughts without even realizing it. They've become a part of our subconscious mind. But by becoming aware of them, we can start to challenge and change them. So, the next time you catch yourself having a negative thought, pause for a moment and acknowledge it. Ask yourself, is this thought serving me? Is it helping me move towards my goals? If the answer is no, then it's time to reframe it. Step 2. Challenge and Replace Once you are aware of your negative thought, it's time to challenge it. Ask yourself, is this thought true? Is there any evidence to support it? Most of the time, you'll realize that your negative thoughts are not based on facts, but rather on your fears and insecurities. Now it's time to replace that negative thought with a positive one. For example, if you catch yourself thinking, I'm not good enough, replace it with, I am capable and worthy of success. By doing this, you're reframing your thought and changing your perspective. Step 3. Practice Gratitude The final step to reframing negative thoughts is to practice gratitude. When we focus on what we're grateful for, we shift our energy towards positivity. It helps us see things in a different light and appreciate what we have rather than focusing on what we lack. Every day, Take a few moments to think about three things that you're grateful for. It could be something as simple as having a roof over your head, or having a supportive friend. By practicing gratitude, you're training your mind to focus on the good in your life, rather than the negative. So there you have it. The three simple steps to reframe negative thoughts and change your mindset. Remember, it all starts with awareness. Once you become aware of your negative thoughts, challenge and replace them with positive ones, and practice gratitude you'll see a significant shift in your mindset. But let me tell you, it's not a one-time thing. It's a continuous process. 
You have to make a conscious effort to reframe your thoughts every day. And I promise you, with time and practice, it will become easier. You'll start to see the world in a different light, and you'll attract more positivity into your life. Which leads us to number two, which is to change your mindset with less effort by surrounding yourself with positive people. Now I know what you might be thinking. I can't control who I'm surrounded by. I can't just choose the people around me. But let me tell you, my friends, you have more control over your surroundings than you think. We all know the saying, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, and it couldn't be more true. The people we surround ourselves with have a significant impact on our mindset, our thoughts, and our actions. They can either lift us up or bring us down, motivate us or discourage us, support us or hold us back. So, it's crucial to take a step back and evaluate the people in your life. Are they positive, motivated, and driven individuals? Do they inspire you to be your best self? Do they believe in your dreams and goals? Or do they constantly bring negativity, doubt, and pessimism into your life? Now I'm not saying that you should cut off all the negative people in your life. Sometimes they may be family members or close friends, and it's not easy to distance yourself from them. But what you can do is limit your time with them and be mindful of the impact they have on your mindset. On the other hand, it's crucial to surround yourself with positive people who uplift you, motivate you, and support you. These individuals will not only have a positive influence on your mindset, but also push you to become a better version of yourself. They will challenge you to grow and achieve your goals. But how do you find these positive people? Well, the first step is to be a positive person yourself. Like attracts like, and if you radiate positivity, you will naturally attract positive people into your life. Be the kind of person you want to surround yourself with. Another way is to join groups or communities that align with your interests and goals. Whether it's a gym, a book club, a business networking group, or any other group that shares your passions, these groups are a great way to meet like-minded individuals who can become your support system and help you stay on track towards your goals. And don't be afraid to reach out and connect with people who inspire you. Whether it's someone you admire from a distance, a mentor, or even a successful individual in your field, reach out to them, ask for advice, and build a relationship with them. Having a mentor or a role model can have a tremendous impact on your mindset and your success. Now some of you might be thinking, but Jim, I don't have anyone like that in my life. I don't have positive people around me. Well, my friend, then it's time to change your surroundings. Remember, you have more control over your environment than you think. If the people in your life are not supporting your growth, it's time to expand your circle and find new positive influences. Surrounding yourself with positive people is not just about having a support system or finding motivation. It's also about learning from others. When you surround yourself with successful positive individuals, you have the opportunity to observe their habits, mindset, and actions. You can learn from their experiences and apply them to your own life. And let me tell you, the power of association is real. When you surround yourself with successful people, you start to believe that you can achieve success too. You start to adopt their mindset, habits, and actions. And before you know it, you're on your way to achieving your own success. But it's not just about finding positive people. It's also about being a positive influence on others. As you continue to grow and improve yourself, you'll naturally inspire and motivate those around you. You'll become a role model for others, and your positive energy will have a ripple effect on those around you. Which leads us to number one, which is to change your mindset with less effort by practicing gratitude. Now you may be wondering, what exactly is gratitude? Gratitude is the act of being thankful and appreciative for what you have in your life. It's a powerful emotion that can shift your focus from what you lack to what you have. It's a mindset that allows you to see the beauty and blessings in your life, no matter how big or small they may be. But why is gratitude the number one way to change your mindset with less effort? Well, let me tell you, my friends. Gratitude is like a magic potion that can instantly transform your perspective. It has the power to change your thoughts, feelings, and actions. When you practice gratitude, you train your mind to focus on the positive aspects of your life, and in turn, you attract more positivity into your life. Think about it. How often do we find ourselves complaining about what we don't have? We're constantly bombarded with messages that tell us we need more to be happy and fulfilled. We're always chasing after the next big thing, thinking it will bring us the joy and satisfaction we crave. But the truth is, true happiness and fulfillment come from within, and gratitude is the key to unlocking it. 
When you practice gratitude, you shift your focus from what you lack to what you have. You start to appreciate the little things in life, the things that we often take for granted. You begin to see the beauty in the simple moments, like a warm cup of coffee in the morning, a smile from a stranger, or a beautiful sunset. You realize that you have so much to be thankful for, and that realization alone can bring you more joy and happiness than any material possession ever could. But gratitude is not just about being thankful for the good things in your life. It's also about being grateful for the challenges and struggles that come your way. You see, my friends, every obstacle, every setback is an opportunity for growth and learning. When you practice gratitude, you train your mind to see the lessons and blessings in every situation, even the difficult ones. And that, my friends, is a powerful mindset to have. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. How can I practice gratitude when I'm going through tough times? How can I be grateful when everything seems to be falling apart? And my answer to you is this. Gratitude is not about denying your struggles or pretending that everything is perfect. It's about shifting your perspective and finding the silver lining in every situation. It's about being thankful for the lessons and growth that come from the challenges in your life. So, how can you start practicing gratitude in your daily life? It's simple, my friends. You can start by keeping a gratitude journal. Every day, write down three things that you're thankful for. It could be something as small as a good night's sleep, or something as big as a promotion at work. The key is to find something to be grateful for every day, no matter how big or small. Another way to practice gratitude is to express it to others. Take the time to thank the people in your life who have made a positive impact on you. Whether it's a friend, a family member, a colleague, or even a stranger, let them know how grateful you are for their presence in your life. Not only will it make them feel appreciated, but it will also fill your heart with joy and gratitude. And finally, my friends, the most important way to practice gratitude is to simply be present. When you're fully present in the moment, you can appreciate all the blessings in your life. Take a moment to pause and look around you. Notice the beauty that surrounds you, the people who love you, and the opportunities that are available to you. When you're present, you can truly experience the power of gratitude, it's a simple yet powerful tool that can transform your life in ways you never thought possible. So, I urge you all to start incorporating gratitude into your daily life, and I promise you, you'll see the positive impact it will have on your mindset and your life. Thank you. Today, I'm thrilled to share a message that I believe has the power to profoundly change your life. In today's message, we'll delve into the topic of conquering your comfort zone and unlocking your full potential. You might be wondering, why should I leave my comfort zone? After all, it's comfortable for a reason. But let me tell you, my friends, staying within our comfort zone is one of the greatest barriers to personal growth and success. It constrains our potential and hinders us from achieving our goals and dreams. But here's the good news. You're not alone in this struggle. We all have our comfort zones, and we all face the challenge of breaking free from them. However, the difference lies in how we choose to confront it. By listening to this message, you're taking the first step toward turning things around and stepping into the life you truly desire. So, are you ready to conquer your comfort zone and unlock your full potential? Are you ready to break free from the limitations that hold you back? If your answer is yes, then let's delve into the five ways that will assist you in conquering your comfort zone and unleashing your full potential. Trust me, by the end of this, you'll feel inspired and equipped with the tools to take action and create the life you deserve. So, let's get started. Let's begin with number five. Conquering your comfort zone by embracing discomfort. I understand what some of you may be thinking. Why would anyone willingly leave their comfort zone and subject themselves to discomfort? It's a fair question. But let me pose this to you. Have you ever achieved anything remarkable by staying within your comfort zone? Have you ever grown, learned, or improved without stepping outside of what is familiar and easy? The answer, my friends, is no. That's why it's crucial to embrace discomfort, because it's only when we step out of our comfort zone that we truly grow and reach our full potential. But how do we conquer our comfort zone? It's not easy, but it's definitely achievable. The first step is to recognize that our comfort zone is not a physical place, but rather a state of mind. It's where we feel safe, secure, and in control. While it may seem desirable, it's also a place of stagnation and limitation. We must understand that growth and progress can only occur when we're willing to step out of our comfort zone and embrace discomfort. 
This discomfort can manifest in various forms. Trying something new, taking on a new challenge, or facing our fears. But it's through these uncomfortable experiences that we learn, adapt, and become better versions of ourselves. So my friends, I urge you to start embracing discomfort and conquering your comfort zone. It's through these experiences that we learn, grow, and become the best versions of ourselves. Remember, our comfort zone is not a place of growth but rather a place of limitation. Moving on to number four. In order to achieve our dreams and reach our full potential, we must be willing to step outside of our comfort zone and take small steps towards our goals. I know it can be scary to step outside of our comfort zone. It's human nature to want to stay in our safe bubble where we know what to expect and feel in control. But growth and comfort cannot coexist. If we want to grow and become the best version of ourselves, we must be willing to step out of our comfort zone and take small steps towards our goals. So how do we conquer our comfort zone? The answer is simple. Take small steps. Many of us make the mistake of trying to make big drastic changes in our lives all at once. We set huge goals and expect to achieve them overnight. But success is not a one-time event. It's a series of small steps taken consistently over time. Just like when we were babies learning to walk, we took small steps until we built up the strength and confidence to take bigger steps. The same principle applies to conquering our comfort zone. We must take small steps until we build up the strength and confidence to take bigger steps towards our goals. So my friends, I urge you to start taking small steps towards your goals. It could be as simple as waking up 15 minutes earlier each day to work on a side project, or signing up for a course to learn a new skill. These small steps may seem insignificant, but they are building momentum and moving you closer to your dreams. I know stepping outside of our comfort zone can be scary. We may fear failure, rejection, or what others will think of us. But the only way to overcome these fears is to face them head on. As the saying goes, Everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear. So my friends, I challenge you to do one thing every day that scares you. By facing our fears and taking small steps, we are not only conquering our comfort zone, but also building resilience and confidence. Moving on to number three, conquering your comfort zone by setting goals outside of it. Are you satisfied with where you are in life right now? Are you living up to your full potential? Or are you stuck in a comfortable routine, going through the motions day after day? year after year? If you're truly happy, that's great. But if you have even the slightest feeling of dissatisfaction or a desire for more, then you owe it to yourself to step out of your comfort zone and set goals that will challenge and inspire you. So, how do we break free from this comfort zone and achieve our true potential? The answer is simple. We set goals outside of it. We take risks, challenge ourselves, and push ourselves out of our comfort zone. Setting goals outside of our comfort zone is the key to personal growth and success. It's what separates the average from the exceptional. And while it's not easy, it's definitely worth it. To conquer our comfort zone and set goals outside of it, we first need to identify our comfort zone. What are the things that we do on a daily basis without much thought or effort? What are the things that we avoid because they make us uncomfortable? These are the boundaries of our comfort zone. Next. We need to start setting goals that are just outside of our comfort zone. Goals that will require us to stretch and grow. These goals will challenge us, but they are achievable with effort and determination. But here's the crucial part. We need to take action. It's not enough to just set goals. We need to take action towards achieving them. So my friends, I urge you to step out of your comfort zone, set goals that inspire you, and take action towards achieving them. And let me tell you, the first step is always the hardest. It's the step that takes you out of your comfort zone and into the unknown. But once you take that step, you'll realize that it's not as scary as you thought. And with each step, you gain confidence and momentum. But here's the thing. You will face obstacles and setbacks along the way. You'll face fear, doubt, and discomfort. And that's okay. In fact, it's necessary because it's through these challenges that we grow and become stronger. So when you face these obstacles, don't retreat back into your comfort zone. Instead, face them head on and push through. Remember, the greater the challenge, the greater the reward. Now let me tell you something that might surprise you. Failure is a necessary part of success. Yes, you've heard that right. Failure is not something to be feared, but rather embraced because it's through failure that we learn and improve. So if you fail, don't beat yourself up. Instead, 
Reflect on what went wrong. Learn from it. And use that knowledge to do better next time. And finally, I want to leave you with this. The comfort zone is not a physical place, it's a state of mind. It's a mindset that limits us and holds us back from reaching our full potential. But the good news is, we have the power to change our mindset. We have the power to break free from our comfort zone and achieve greatness. And it all starts with setting goals outside of it. My friends, I urge you to take action today. Identify your comfort zone, set goals outside of it, and take that first step towards achieving them. I promise you, it will be uncomfortable, it will be scary, but it will also be the most rewarding thing you'll ever do. Now let's break down number two, which is understanding why you stay in your comfort zone. We all have a comfort zone, a place where we feel safe and secure. It's a place where we're familiar with our surroundings and we know what to expect. But is staying in your comfort zone really helping you grow and achieve your goals? I believe the answer is no. You see, staying in your comfort zone is like being stuck in quicksand. At first it may feel safe and secure, but the longer you stay, the harder it becomes to get out. And before you know it, you're trapped and unable to move forward. This is the danger of staying in your comfort zone. It may feel good in the moment, but it's holding you back from reaching your full potential. So why do we stay in our comfort zones? The answer is simple. Fear. We're afraid of the unknown, of failure, of rejection, and of change. We're afraid to step out of our comfort zone because we're afraid of what might happen. But let me tell you, this fear is just an illusion. It's a product of our thoughts, and it only has power over us if we allow it to. Think about it. When you were a child, you weren't afraid to try new things, to take risks, and make mistakes. But as we grow older, we become more cautious and hesitant. We start to overthink and analyze every decision we make. We let fear control us and keep us in our comfort zone. But here's the thing. In order to conquer your comfort zone, you must first understand why you stay in it. Is it because of fear, self-doubt, or past failures? Once you understand the root cause, you can start to work towards overcoming it. One of the main reasons we stay in our comfort zone is because we're afraid of failure. We're afraid of trying something new and not succeeding. But let me tell you, failure is not the opposite of success. It's a part of success. Every successful person has failed multiple times before they achieve their goals. Failure is not something to be feared. It's something to be embraced because it's through failure that we learn and grow. Another reason we stay in our comfort zone is because of self-doubt. We doubt our abilities and our worthiness. We compare ourselves to others and think we're not good enough. But let me tell you this. You are capable of achieving great things. You have unique talents and skills that no one else has. Don't let self-doubt hold you back from reaching your full potential. Believe in yourself and trust in your abilities. Past failures can also keep us trapped in our comfort zone. We're afraid to try again because we don't want to experience the pain of failure. But here's the thing. Past failures do not determine your future. You have the power to change your circumstances and create a new outcome. Learn from your past failures and use them as stepping stones towards success. Now, I want to share with you some practical steps to help you conquer your comfort zone. The first step is to set clear and specific goals. When you have a clear vision of what you want to achieve, it becomes easier to step out of your comfort zone. Write down your goals and create an action plan to achieve them. The second step is to take small steps towards your goals. You don't have to make big leaps, but take small steps every day. This will help you build momentum and gain confidence. Remember, progress is progress, no matter how small. The third step is to surround yourself with the right people. The people you surround yourself with have a huge impact on your mindset and your actions. Surround yourself with positive and supportive individuals who will encourage you to step out of your comfort zone. The fourth step is to embrace discomfort. As I mentioned earlier, Discomfort is necessary for growth and success. Don't shy away from challenges and new experiences. Embrace them and see them as opportunities to learn and grow. And finally, the fifth step is to celebrate your successes. No matter how small, every time you step out of your comfort zone and take action towards your goals, celebrate it. This will give you the motivation to keep going and conquer your comfort zone. Now, to the number one way to conquer your comfort zone. So, how do we conquer our comfort zone? The first step is to identify it. You see, our comfort zone is not a physical place, but a mental state. 
It's a set of beliefs and habits that we've developed over time. And the only way to break free from it is to become aware of it. Take a moment to reflect on your life. Are there certain areas where you feel stuck or stagnant? Do you find yourself making excuses for not taking risks or trying new things? These are all signs that you may be in your comfort zone. Once you've identified your comfort zone, the next step is to understand why it exists. Our comfort zone is a product of our past experiences, our fears, and our limiting beliefs. We've been conditioned to believe that staying within our comfort zone is the safest and most secure option. But let me tell you, playing it safe will never lead to greatness. It's only when we step out of our comfort zone that we can truly grow and achieve our goals. Now I'm not suggesting that we should completely abandon our comfort zone and jump into the unknown. That would be reckless. What I am advocating for is a gradual expansion of our comfort zone. We must be willing to take small steps outside of our comfort zone and challenge ourselves. For example, if public speaking is something that makes you uncomfortable, start by speaking in front of a small group of friends or colleagues. As you gain more confidence, you can gradually increase the size of your audience. The key is to push ourselves just enough to feel a little uncomfortable, but not so much that we become overwhelmed. This is what I like to call the stretch zone. It's a place where we can learn and grow without feeling completely out of our depth. But why is it so important to step out of our comfort zone? Well, let me share with you three reasons. Firstly, stepping out of our comfort zone allows us to discover our true potential. Many of us have hidden talents and abilities that we're not aware of because we've never pushed ourselves to explore them. When we step out of our comfort zone, we're forced to tap into our inner strength and creativity. We're able to see what we're truly capable of achieving. Secondly, conquering our comfort zone leads to personal growth. When we stay within our comfort zone, we're not challenging ourselves to learn and improve. It's only when we face new challenges and experiences that we can learn and develop new skills. And this growth not only benefits us personally, but it also makes us more valuable to our employers, our families, and our communities. And finally, stepping out of our comfort zone leads to a more fulfilling and meaningful life. We all have dreams and aspirations, but they can only be realized if we're willing to take risks and step out of our comfort zone. Imagine looking back on your life and regretting not taking that chance or trying something new. Don't let fear hold you back from living a life of purpose and fulfillment. So, my friends, I urge you to identify your comfort zone and start taking small steps outside of it. Remember, growth and success are not found within our comfort zone, but just beyond it. And as you continue to push yourself and expand your comfort zone, you'll see your confidence, your abilities, and your opportunities grow. In part two of this speech, we'll delve deeper into personal development and discuss practical ways to expand your comfort zone. But for now, I leave you with this quote from the great American writer Mark Twain. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So throw off the bowlines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. I'm thrilled to delve into a topic that holds a special place in my heart. Do you find yourself grappling with breaking through your limitations? Perhaps you feel like you're constantly hitting a wall, unable to reach your full potential. Well, my friends, you are not alone. I've encountered countless individuals facing the same challenge, feeling stuck in both their personal and professional lives. But fear not, because in today's message, I'm going to share with you five powerful ways to challenge yourself and break through those limitations. These are strategies I've personally employed, witnessing incredible results. And let me tell you, there's no greater feeling than breaking through a barrier and achieving something you once deemed impossible. So let's dive in. Starting with number five. Challenge yourself and break through your limitations by practicing self-discipline and consistency. Now, I understand what some of you may be thinking. Self-discipline and consistency sound like hard work and sacrifice. And you're absolutely right. But let me pose a question. Are the rewards that come with breaking through your limitations worth the hard work and sacrifice? I firmly believe they are. And I'm here to illustrate why. First and foremost. Let's define what self-discipline and consistency entail. Self-discipline is the ability to control your impulses and emotions, staying focused on what's important. It's about consciously deciding to do what needs to be done, even when you don't feel like it. Consistency, on the other hand, is the act of repeatedly doing something without fail. It's about establishing a habit and sticking to it day in and day out. Now, why are self-discipline and consistency so crucial when it comes to challenging yourself and breaking through your limitations? Well, let me tell you, 
It all starts with your mindset. Your mindset is the foundation of everything you do in life. It's the lens through which you see the world and the filter through which you interpret your experiences. And if you have a weak mindset, you'll easily give in to your impulses and emotions, struggling to stay consistent. But if you have a strong mindset, one fueled by self-discipline and consistency, you'll have the mental strength to push through any challenge and break through your limitations. Self-discipline and consistency go hand in hand. When you have self-discipline, you're able to stay consistent. And when you're consistent, you're able to strengthen your self-discipline. It's a powerful cycle that leads to success. Now, I want to share with you three ways in which you can practice self-discipline and consistency to challenge yourself and break through your limitations. The first way is to set clear and specific goals. Without a clear goal in mind, it's easy to get sidetracked and lose focus. But when you have a specific goal, you have something to work towards, making it easier to stay disciplined and consistent. So take some time to think about what you want to achieve and set a specific goal that will push you out of your comfort zone. Remember, your goal should be challenging yet achievable. The second way is to create a plan and stick to it. Self-discipline and consistency aren't just about mental strength. They also involve having a plan and sticking to it. Create a plan that will help you reach your goal and commit to following it every single day. It may not be easy at first, but with time, it will become a habit, making it easier to stay consistent. The third way is to hold yourself accountable. It's easy to make excuses and justify why we didn't do something. But when you hold yourself accountable, you take ownership of your actions and results. Find someone who can hold you accountable, whether it's a friend, mentor, or coach. Share your goals and plan with them, and ask them to check in with you regularly. This will not only help you stay disciplined and consistent, but also provide you with the support and motivation you need to keep going. When you look back on your life, you don't want to have any regrets. You want to know that you gave it your all and challenged yourself to break through your limitations. And the only way to do that is by practicing self-discipline and consistency. Which leads us to number four. Challenge yourself and break through your limitations by embracing failure and learning from it. Now, I know what you may be thinking. Failure is not something we want to embrace. It brings feelings of disappointment, frustration, and even shame. But I'm here to tell you that failure is not something to be feared. Rather, it's something to be embraced and learned from. You see, failure is not the opposite of success. It's a part of the journey. It's through failure that we learn, grow, and ultimately achieve our goals. Think about it. Every successful person you know has experienced failure at some point in their life. Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team, Oprah Winfrey was fired from her first job as a TV anchor, and Walt Disney was told he lacked creativity and imagination. But did they let failure stop them? No, they used it as fuel to push themselves further and achieve their dreams. So, how can we embrace failure and use it to challenge ourselves and break through our limitations? The first step is to change our mindset. Instead of viewing failure as a negative, see it as an opportunity to learn and improve. As Thomas Edison once said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Each failure brings us one step closer to success, as long as we're willing to learn from it. The next step is to take responsibility for our failures. It can be easy to blame others or make excuses for our shortcomings. But true growth and progress come from taking ownership of our mistakes. Success has many fathers, but failure is an orphan. Do not be afraid to take ownership of your failures, for it is through this accountability that we can truly learn and improve. Another way to embrace failure is to see it as a learning opportunity. When we fail, we're forced to reflect on what went wrong and how we can do better next time. This self-reflection is crucial for personal growth and development. So, instead of dwelling on the disappointment of failure, use it as a chance to evaluate your actions and make necessary adjustments for future success. Lastly, do not let failure define you. It's easy to get caught up in the idea that one failure means we are a failure, but this is simply not true. Failure is a temporary setback, not a permanent label. It's important to separate our self-worth from our failures and remember that we are capable of achieving great things despite our past mistakes. Which leads us to number three. Challenge yourself and break through your limitations by surrounding yourself with people who inspire you. Your environment plays a crucial role in shaping who you are and what you can achieve, and the people you surround yourself with are a major part of that environment. 
When you surround yourself with people who inspire you, who are driven and motivated, it has a positive impact on your life. These individuals push you to be better, to think bigger, and to strive for more. They challenge you to break through your limitations and reach for your dreams. But let me be clear. Surrounding yourself with inspiring individuals does not mean you have to cut ties with everyone else. It simply means being intentional about the people you spend the most time with. It means choosing to surround yourself with those who uplift and motivate you, rather than bring you down. Now you may be thinking, how do I find these inspiring individuals? Well the truth is, they're all around you. They can be your friends, family members, colleagues, or even strangers you meet. The key is to be open to building relationships with those who inspire you. And once you find them, nurture those relationships and learn from them. One of my mentors, the late Earl Schaff, once said, You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I couldn't agree more. So ask yourself, are the people you spend the most time with helping you grow and reach your full potential? Are they challenging you to break through your limitations? If not, it may be time to reevaluate your circle and make some changes. Surrounding yourself with inspiring individuals not only helps you break through your limitations, but it also opens up new opportunities and perspectives. When you're around like-minded individuals who are striving for success, it creates a positive and supportive environment. In that environment, you have the freedom to dream big and think outside the box. But it's not just about surrounding yourself with successful individuals. It's about learning from them and implementing their habits and mindset into your own life. Take the time to observe and study the people who inspire you. What do they do differently? How do they handle challenges and setbacks? What motivates them? By learning from them, you can adopt their habits, mindset, and apply it to your own life. I also want to emphasize the importance of being a source of inspiration for others. Just as you are seeking out inspiring individuals, there are also people who are looking up to you. They see your drive and determination, and they are inspired by it. So use your influence to positively impact those around you. Share your knowledge and experiences, and be a source of motivation for others. Which leads us to number two. Challenge yourself and break through your limitations by stepping out of your comfort zone. You see, the comfort zone is a dangerous place to be. It may feel safe and familiar, but it is also where dreams go to die. It's where we settle for mediocrity and let our fears and doubts hold us back from reaching our full potential. But I'm here to tell you that you are capable of so much more. You have within you the power to break through your limitations and achieve greatness. And it all starts with stepping out of your comfort zone. Now I'm not saying that it will be easy. In fact, it will be one of the most challenging things you will ever do. But let me ask you this, my friends. What is the alternative? To stay in your comfort zone and live a life of regret, wondering what could have been. Or to take a leap of faith and discover just how much you are truly capable of. I choose the latter, and I hope you will too. So how do we go about stepping out of our comfort zone? The first step is to identify what your comfort zone looks like. It could be a certain routine, a particular job, or even a relationship that no longer serves you. Once you have identified it, it is time to take action. The second step is to set a goal that is just outside of your comfort zone. Something that scares you, but also excites you. It could be running a marathon, starting your own business, or even just speaking in front of a crowd. Whatever it may be, make sure it is something that will push you to grow and challenge yourself. And finally, the most important step. Take action. This is where most people get stuck. They have identified their comfort zone, set a goal, but then they hesitate to take that first step. They let their fears and doubts hold them back. But fear is just an illusion. It is not real. It is simply a thought that we have given power to. And the only way to overcome it is by taking action. So take that first step, and then another, and another. Before you know it, you will have broken through your limitations and achieved what you once thought was impossible. Now I want to share with you a personal story. When I was just starting out in my career, I was terrified of public speaking. The thought of standing in front of a crowd and delivering a speech made me break out in a cold sweat. But I knew that if I wanted to achieve my goals and make an impact, I had to overcome this fear. So I started small. I joined a local Toastmasters club and practiced speaking in front of a small group. And then I gradually increased the size of the audience. It was not easy, but with each speech, I grew more confident and more comfortable stepping out of my comfort zone. 
And now, here I am, standing in front of all of you, delivering this speech. My friends, I am a living example of the power of stepping out of your comfort zone, and I can tell you from experience that the rewards are worth the risk. When we step out of our comfort zone, we open ourselves up to new opportunities, new experiences, and new levels of growth. Which leads us to number one. Challenge yourself and break through your limitations by setting specific and achievable goals. This may seem like a simple concept, but the truth is, many people struggle with setting goals and even more struggle with achieving them. But today, I want to share with you the power of goal setting and how it can transform your life. First and foremost, let's talk about the importance of setting specific goals. A goal without a specific target is like trying to hit a bullseye blindfolded. You may get close, but you will never hit the mark. Specific goals give you a clear direction and a clear destination. They allow you to focus your energy and efforts towards a specific outcome. So I challenge you to think about what you truly want in life. What is your ultimate goal? Write it down and make it as specific as possible. Next, let's talk about achievable goals. Many people make the mistake of setting unrealistic goals. And when they fail to achieve them, they get discouraged and give up. But the key is to set goals that are challenging yet achievable. You want to stretch yourself, but not to the point where you break. Remember, success is a journey, not a sprint. So set achievable goals that will push you out of your comfort zone and help you grow. Now setting goals is just the first step. The real challenge comes in achieving them. And this is where most people give up. They get overwhelmed by the obstacles and limitations that come their way. But I want to tell you that these challenges are not meant to stop you. They are meant to strengthen you. They are meant to make you better, stronger, and more resilient. When you set specific and achievable goals, you are essentially creating a roadmap for success. And just like any journey, there will be bumps on the road. But the key is to stay committed to your goals and to keep moving forward no matter what. Remember, success is not about avoiding challenges, it's about overcoming them. So how do you break through your limitations and achieve your goals? First, you must have a burning desire for success. You must want it more than anything else. This desire will fuel your motivation and determination to keep going when things get tough. Secondly, you must have a strong mindset. Your thoughts and beliefs are powerful. If you believe that you can achieve your goals, then you will. But if you doubt yourself and your abilities, then you are setting yourself up for failure. So cultivate a positive and resilient mindset that will help you overcome any obstacle. Lastly, you must take action. Goals without action are just dreams. You must be willing to put in the work, make sacrifices, and take risks. Success does not come easy, but it is worth it. So take consistent action towards your goals and never give up. I want to leave you with this quote by Zig Ziglar. If you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. So I challenge you to set specific and achievable goals, challenge yourself, and break through your limitations. The power to transform your life is in your hands. Are you ready to take action and make your dreams a reality? I believe in you. Now it's time for you to believe in yourself. Thank you. Are you struggling with bad habits? Do you find yourself constantly stuck in negative patterns, unable to break free? Well, you're not alone. In today's message, I want to share with you five powerful ways to change your bad habits and transform your life. As a motivational speaker and personal development guru, I've witnessed countless individuals successfully turn their lives around by implementing these simple yet effective strategies. I believe that by listening to this message, you too can make a positive change in your life. So, grab a pen and paper and get ready to take some notes because this is going to be a life-changing journey. Are you ready to say goodbye to your bad habits and hello to a better version of yourself? Let's dive in, starting with number five. Change your bad habits by surrounding yourself with positive influences. Now have you ever heard the saying, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with? Well, I'm here to tell you that this statement holds a lot of truth. The people we surround ourselves with have a significant impact on our thoughts, actions, and ultimately, our habits. Think about it for a moment. Have you ever been in a situation where you were trying to quit a bad habit, but your friends or family members were not supportive? Maybe they even encouraged you to continue with that habit, making it even harder for you to break free from it. On the other hand, have you ever been around someone who is constantly positive, motivated, 
and focused on personal growth? Did you notice how their energy and mindset influenced you in a positive way? The truth is, the people we surround ourselves with can either lift us up or bring us down. If we want to change our bad habits, we need to be intentional about who we allow into our inner circle. So, let me share with you three reasons why surrounding yourself with positive influences is crucial for changing your bad habits. First and foremost, positive influences can provide us with support and accountability when we are trying to break a bad habit. It can be challenging to do it alone. We may face moments of weakness or doubt, and having someone who believes in us and encourages us can make all the difference. Positive influences can also hold us accountable for our actions and help us stay on track towards our goals. They can remind us of why we want to change our habits and keep us motivated to keep going. Secondly, surrounding ourselves with positive influences can help us develop a growth mindset. A growth mindset is the belief that we can improve and develop ourselves through hard work and dedication. When we are around people who have a growth mindset, it can rub off on us. We start to see challenges as opportunities for growth, and we become more open to learning and trying new things. This mindset shift is crucial when it comes to changing our bad habits. Instead of seeing them as fixed and unchangeable, we start to believe that we have the power to change and improve ourselves. Lastly, positive influences can inspire us to be our best selves. Have you ever been around someone who radiates positivity and motivation? It's contagious, isn't it? When we surround ourselves with people who are constantly striving to be the best version of themselves, it can inspire us to do the same. We start to believe that we are capable of more, and we become more motivated to work on ourselves and our habits. Now, I want to be clear that surrounding ourselves with positive influences does not mean cutting out all the negative people in our lives. It's not about being exclusive or judgmental. Instead, it's about being intentional with who we spend our time with, and making sure that we have a balance of positive and negative influences. We can still love and care for those who may not have the same mindset as us, but we need to be aware of how their energy and actions may be affecting us. So, how can we surround ourselves with positive influences? First, we can seek out communities or groups of like-minded individuals who are also on a journey of personal growth. These can be in-person meetups, online forums, or even book clubs. Second, we can reach out to mentors or coaches who have achieved what we want to achieve and can guide us on our journey. Lastly, we can be intentional about the people we choose to spend our time with. We can choose to spend more time with those who uplift and inspire us and limit our time with those who bring us down. Which leads us to the number four way to change your bad habits. Create a plan. Now, I know what you're thinking. Jim, I've tried to change my habits before but it never works. How is creating a plan going to make a difference? Well, let me tell you, my friends. A plan is like a roadmap. It gives you direction and guidance towards your desired destination. Without a plan, you are simply wandering aimlessly, hoping to stumble upon success. But with a plan, you have a clear path to follow. And that makes all the difference. So, how do we create a plan to change our bad habits? Let me break it down for you. Step 1. Identify your bad habits. The first step to changing your bad habits is to identify them. Take a moment to reflect on your daily routine and write down all the habits that you know are holding you back. It could be something as simple as hitting the snooze button every morning or something more serious like smoking or overeating. Whatever it may be, be honest with yourself and make a list. Step 2. Understand the root cause. Once you have identified your bad habits, it's time to dig deeper and understand why you have them in the first place. Our habits are often a result of our thoughts and beliefs. So, ask yourself, what belief or thought is driving this habit? Is it a coping mechanism for stress? Is it a way to seek comfort? Understanding the root cause will help you address the underlying issue and make it easier to change the habit. Step 3. Set a specific goal. Now that you know what habits you want to change and why you have them, it's time to set a specific goal. Your goal should be clear, measurable, and achievable. For example, instead of saying, I want to stop procrastinating, set a specific goal like, I will complete my work before 5 p.m. every day. This will give you a clear target to work towards and keep you motivated. Step 4. Create a plan of action. This is the most crucial step in changing your bad habits. You need to create a plan of action that will help you achieve your goal. Write down the steps you need to take to change your habit. For example, 
If your goal is to stop smoking, your plan of action could include steps like finding a support group, replacing smoking with a healthier habit, and avoiding triggers that make you want to smoke. Having a plan in place will make it easier for you to stay on track and make progress. Step 5. Stay committed and accountable. Changing habits is not an easy task. It requires dedication and consistency. So, it's important to stay committed to your goal and hold yourself accountable. One way to do this is by tracking your progress. Keep a journal or use a habit tracking app to monitor your daily actions. This will help you stay motivated and see how far you've come. Step 6. Be patient and kind to yourself. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither are new habits. Changing habits takes time, and it's important to be patient with yourself. Don't beat yourself up if you slip up or have a bad day. Instead, be kind to yourself and remember that it's all part of the process. Stay focused on your goal and keep moving forward. Which leads us to number three. Change your bad habits by replacing the habit with a positive activity. So many of us struggle with bad habits that hold us back from reaching our full potential. Whether it's procrastination, overeating, smoking, or any other destructive habit. We all have something we want to change. But the question is, how do we do it? The first step is to identify the bad habit that you want to change. This may seem obvious, but it's crucial to be specific. Instead of saying, I want to stop procrastinating, say, I want to stop scrolling through social media for hours instead of working on my goals. This will help you have a clear focus and a specific action to replace. Now, once you have identified your bad habit, it's time to replace it with a positive activity. The key here is to find something that will bring you joy and fulfillment. It could be a new hobby, a physical activity, or even a new skill you want to learn. The important thing is that it should be something that you genuinely enjoy doing. For example, if your bad habit is overeating, you could replace it with a physical activity like jogging or yoga. Not only will this help you burn calories, but it will also release endorphins, which will make you feel good and reduce your cravings for unhealthy food. Or if you want to stop procrastinating, you could replace it with a new hobby like painting or playing an instrument. These activities will not only be enjoyable, but they will also help you develop new skills and boost your creativity. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't have time for a new activity. I'm already so busy with work and family. My answer to that is, make time. We all have the same 24 hours in a day, and it's up to us to prioritize and manage our time effectively. Instead of mindlessly scrolling through social media or watching TV, use that time to engage in a positive activity that will bring you closer to your goals. Another important aspect of replacing bad habits with positive activities is to have a strong why behind it. Ask yourself, why do I want to change this habit? What will it bring to my life? Having a strong reason will give you the motivation and determination to stick to your new positive activity. Maybe you want to be healthier for your family, or you want to improve your productivity to advance in your career. Whatever your reason may be, hold on to it and let it fuel your actions. Now I want to address something that often holds us back from changing our bad habits. Fear of failure. We are afraid to try something new because we fear that we may not be good at it. But let me tell you, failure is a part of the journey to success. We all have to start somewhere, and it's through trial and error that we learn and grow. So don't let fear stop you from replacing your bad habits with positive activities. Embrace the process and trust that with time and effort, you will see the results. Lastly, I want to remind you that changing bad habits is not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing process that requires consistency and dedication. Don't beat yourself up if you slip up and fall back into your old habits. Instead, acknowledge it. Learn from it, and get back on track. Remember, it's not about being perfect, but about making progress every day. Which leads us to number two. Change your bad habits by setting a goal. Now, you may be wondering, what does setting a goal have to do with changing my bad habits? Well, let me tell you, setting a goal is like setting a destination for your life. It gives you a sense of direction and purpose. And when you have a clear goal in mind, it becomes easier to identify and eliminate the bad habits that are holding you back from achieving that goal. Let me give you an example. Imagine you have a goal to lose 20 pounds in the next six months. Now, if you have the habit of eating unhealthy food and not exercising regularly, do you think you will be able to achieve that goal? Of course not. In order to reach your goal, 
You will have to change your bad habits of eating unhealthy food and not exercising, and instead develop the habit of eating nutritious food and working out regularly. You see, setting a goal not only gives you a clear direction, but it also motivates you to take action. When you have a goal in mind, you are more likely to make conscious decisions that align with that goal. And when you consistently make those decisions, they eventually become habits. Now let me share with you the three steps to effectively change your bad habits by setting a goal. Step 1. Identify your goal. The first step is to identify your goal. What is it that you want to achieve? Is it to improve your health, advance in your career, or enhance your relationships? Whatever it may be, make sure it is a goal that truly excites and motivates you. It should be something that you are passionate about and willing to work hard for. Step 2. Break it down into smaller goals. Once you have identified your main goal, the next step is to break it down into smaller achievable goals. This will not only make your goals seem more attainable, but it will also help you track your progress and stay motivated. Going back to our previous example, if your main goal is to lose 20 pounds in 6 months, you can break it down into smaller goals of losing 3 to 4 pounds per month. This will make it easier for you to focus on one step at a time and celebrate your achievements along the way. Step 3. Develop new habits. The final step is to develop new habits that align with your goal. This is where the real work begins. You must be willing to let go of your bad habits and replace them with new, positive ones. And remember, it takes time and effort to develop a new habit, so be patient with yourself and stay committed to your goal. Now, I want to share with you a powerful technique that will help you develop new habits more effectively. It's called the habit loop. The habit loop consists of three parts. The cue, the routine, and the reward. The cue is the trigger that reminds you to perform a certain behavior. The routine is the actual behavior, and the reward is the positive feeling you get after completing the behavior. By understanding and manipulating the habit loop, you can create new positive habits that will help you reach your goal. Which leads us to number one. Change your bad habits by identifying the habit. Now you may be wondering, how do we identify our bad habits? The first step is to be honest with ourselves. We often tend to make excuses for our bad habits, blaming external factors or justifying them in some way. But the truth is, we are responsible for our habits, and only we can change them. Now, take a moment to reflect on your daily routine and identify the habits that are not serving you well. Once you have identified your bad habits, the next step is to understand why you have them. Our habits are a result of our thoughts, beliefs, and actions. For example, if you have the habit of procrastinating, it could be because you believe that you work better under pressure or that the task is too overwhelming. By understanding the root cause of your habits, you can start to challenge those beliefs and replace them with more positive ones. Here comes the most crucial step, which is to replace your bad habits with good ones. It's not enough to simply stop a bad habit. You need to replace it with a good one. Our brains are wired to seek pleasure and avoid pain. So, if you try to eliminate a bad habit without replacing it with a good one, you will feel a void, and your brain will try to fill it with another bad habit. For example, if you have the habit of stress eating, instead of trying to stop it altogether, replace it with a healthier coping mechanism, like going for a walk or practicing deep breathing. Changing your habits takes time and effort. It's not something that can be done overnight. It requires discipline, consistency, and patience. As the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day, and the same goes for our habits. It takes small daily actions to create lasting change. So, be patient with yourself and celebrate even the smallest victories. Another crucial aspect of changing your bad habits is accountability. It's easy to slip back into old habits when no one is watching. That's why it's essential to have someone or a group of people who can hold you accountable. It could be a friend, a family member, or a coach. Share your goals and progress with them and they can provide you with the support and encouragement you need to stay on track. Lastly, I want to leave you with this thought. Our habits not only affect us, but also those around us. As a parent, your habits can influence your children's habits. As a leader, your habits can impact your team's habits. So, by changing your bad habits, you are not only improving your life, but also the lives of those around you. Changing your bad habits starts with identifying the habit, be honest with yourself, understand the root cause, and replace your bad habits with good ones. It takes time, 
discipline, and accountability, but the results are worth it. As I always say, motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going. So, let's make a habit of changing our bad habits and watch our lives transform for the better. Thank you.